Have you ever wondered why anytime you take your RV into the shop, it is a long wait, a huge bill, and sometimes it comes back more broke than when it went there? As a certified RV technician who's worked both independently and in shops, I'm going to tell you some of the dirty secrets about RV service. If you stick around to the end of the video, I'll give you my three tips on how you can get a better RV service experience. So let's talk about the dirty secrets of RV service that no service manager would want me to tell you. First dirty secret, they will hire literally anyone. Like if you have a pulse, you have a job. That means that most people working on RVs, even at major dealerships, are not certified and don't have any real experience in the field. So why is this happening? Unfortunately, all of the trades are really experiencing a massive labor shortage, and the RV industry is a particularly unattractive trade, which I'll explain more about why that is later. So the result of this is that, unfortunately, a lot of technicians have zero experience with RVs or anything mechanical. Like one of my former co-workers, I asked him what he did before this. He said he was working for a moving company, like moving boxes. He'd never really used tools before this job. So for him, it was a pretty big challenge doing anything on RVs. So this massive labor shortage is a big reason why the common story of the mobile technician is some fly-by-night drug addict who shows up and rips people off. <laughs> I had one person call me up and they kind of balked a little bit at my prices and said they were gonna hire another guy. Three weeks later, he called me up and said, I'm sorry I didn't pick you the first time. The other guy I hired, I can't get him to come back out because he's currently in jail and I'm not getting my money back. So the second dirty secret is that RV certification means pretty much nothing compared to what it means to be a licensed electrician or plumber, for example. The way those trades are regulated, you must work under someone with the license for years before you're even allowed to take the test and to work independently under those trades. RV industry certification, on the other hand, doesn't actually require any work experience. You can do hands-on training with them, or you can do the study at home program where you simply have to pass the test. It doesn't matter if you've ever picked up a screwdriver or not. Being a really good RV technician is actually a very difficult thing to master because it's not just learning one trade like being an electrician. It's learning to be an electrician and a plumber and a mechanic and roofing and siding and HVAC. Like all of these are independent trades that take years to master. You really, really, really need a good mentor in the industry. You can't just learn it from books. But the problem is the way shops are usually structured just kind of discourages the mentorship that technicians need. If you're being paid by the job, there's no real incentive to take time out of your schedule to go pursue higher learning or more certifications. If you have the option between pursuing education about RVs, which doesn't pay very well, versus repair jobs you know how to do, technicians are going to pick the better paying option. And I know you're probably thinking like, well, maybe they should just pay technicians straight hourly instead of like buy the job and then they'll have more of an incentive to like take the time to learn this stuff. I'm sorry, folks. Learning really complicated RV systems is not as fun as sitting on the roof of a camper watching The Witcher season one in preparation for Witcher season two coming out. Like the culture I was in, you would show up to work, clock in, and then sit down and do nothing for an hour until the service manager came in, and then you go look busy. There's no incentive in an hourly system for guys to get things done on a deadline or accurately the first time. So what this means for you is that if you are so unlucky as to be assigned an incompetent technician who breaks your RV when it comes in for service, and then you have to send it back to the shop for them to make it right, the shop has already paid the technician and charged the customer as much as they can charge them for the repair. They don't want to send the first guy back on the job because he clearly didn't know what to do, so they have to pick someone else. None of the other technicians really want to touch that problem child. It ends up falling to the next least experienced technician, but because this is cleaning up someone else's mess, it's not only going to be low pay, it's probably going to be a headache job because it was clearly too complicated for the first guy. He's probably going to procrastinate and pick other projects over that one, which is why it can take months and months sometimes. Another consequence of technicians not having a real high level of understanding of RV systems and how to diagnose and troubleshoot properly is a high level of just part swapping. Oh, your refrigerator doesn't work? Let's put a new one in. A customer recently emailed me saying that their gas range had gone bad three times in a row. I'm like, ooh, that just smells like someone didn't know actually what was going on there and was just getting the manufacturer to send new gas ranges under warranty. Probably wasn't the problem. And the third dirty secret, which will probably surprise you because you're paying out to so there's not really a lot of money in the RV service industry unless you're independent. 
Believe it or not, some dealerships run their service center at a loss because they need to provide this service under warranty for the units that they're selling. They charge $150, $180, $190 an hour for RV work, and they're paying their technicians chump change, like 16 to 20 bucks an hour, all the other money is going to overhead. The real estate you need to run a large RV service center is like acres and you need lots of employees and like the electric and gas heating bills are like off the charts. You can make decent money if you're an independent technician like me. But now on top of being just an RV technician, you're also a small business owner, which comes with a lot more jobs. So what can you do to avoid a situation where incompetent technicians are actively breaking your already broken RV. Here's my three best tips for how to avoid it. So tip number one is to find your technician through referrals. Not just a Google review. Those sometimes are loaded with fictitious reviews. You can actually pay for five-star ratings. Go search on forums or word of mouth, people you know that have had a good experience with a technician or a shop in general. If you know of a really good technician or a service center that you've had a good experience with, leave a comment below so other people know where to find these good technicians. Tip number two, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. I'm sure all the service managers are going to hate me for saying this, but it's true. The more annoying you are, the faster you'll get service. Now, before you go and be a jerk to your service manager, because I told you to, I want you to have realistic expectations going into a service experience. There are so many broken RVs out there, so many warranty claims, and so few technicians to help fix all of them, that even with the best of service centers, you're probably not going to get it fixed in a week, probably not going to get it fixed before your next camping trip. I'm advocating being annoying only when you know you're getting the runaround. There's a big difference between it's going to take three months to get the parts and get it fixed and they give you a deadline and then that doesn't happen and three months turns into six months and six months turns into more and more excuses. And if being annoying just isn't doing the trick and you're getting a really terrible experience with your service center, I'd encourage you to do a couple of things. One is you can contact the manufacturer and let them know just how poorly you're being treated by their dealership. There's actually been dealerships that have been dropped from a manufacturer because the manufacturer said that they weren't meeting their service standards. Another thing you can do is actually go leave a one-star review for that service center. I know a lot of people who are upset just kind of grumble and gripe about it, but they don't take the time to leave a review. Dealerships are paying attention to their social media, and this may actually incentivize them to prioritize getting your case fixed. Tip number three is just to avoid the shop altogether. In my experience as a technician, at least a quarter of the repairs I end up doing are completely preventable. That's why I made my tool-free RV maintenance course, which is 15 tool-free tips that you can do that'll save you up to $50,000 in repair and just keep you out of the shop and out camping more so you can actually enjoy your RV instead of just dumping money down a drain. And I know, I know, some of you are probably thinking, I just don't have time to do these kinds of preventive maintenance tasks. Well, keep in mind, they only take about five minutes each. And let's be real honest, you're going to spend less time doing this preventive maintenance than you will waiting on hold over and over with the service center or arguing with the receptionist about whether or not the parts for your RV have actually come in. Folks, you can avoid so many repairs and save so much money by doing this course. Just, just do it. If you're curious to know what these tips are, you can go to my website, which is linked below, howtonotbreakyourrv.com. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video to be helpful. So happy camping and go don't break your RV.